tugging some play before we do the throw. Make sure I've got the vacuum up. This play's been sitting for a day, so I need to plug it again. The vacuum de-airs it, makes it much easier to throw. And the mixing action here softens it up, makes it very easy to centre and throw. I don't need the clay at all. I just take it straight out of the pump mill onto the wheel. Oh, bash it around a bit first. Uh, I'm fortunate that that knuckle on a four inch puck is exactly one kilo. <laughs> and that's an eight kilo stick. And there's eight kilos ready to throw. Pop it into shape and we're ready to go. Right, uh, throwing an eight kilo bowl here. Get the bat on first. Moisten the vat up a little and with my usual precision it's off about 50 mil. Just centre with a larger lump of clay. I can bring it down bit by bit with the heel. Um, this clay is very firm. Throw a bowl that is one potter described it as gravity defying. I need to start with very firm clay. So that can be a problem centering. And there we go. Clay's been sitting for a little bit. So it's not like liking being told what to do. A little bit of brute force and ignorance doesn't go astray. And just enter with the thumb first, both hands too far down to go down in one hit, re-center the rim, push-pull action, and then go down as far as I want to go. Check that I'm not making a pipe, that I've actually got a bit of clay on the base there. Yep, enough. And then start bringing the bowl up. little ways then re-center pushing and pulling on the rim you could say it's make or break push it too far and you lose it don't push it far enough and it's a jab just another bolt manipulating this a little at the finish so I need to clean up 
the feeder marks because there won't be a chance to do that after I've manipulated it. Well, at least not easily. This point, and to ensure the safety of my bat by getting some slip on it. smoothing action the side of the fingers rather than the tips and firming the base to avoid cracks later on hopefully okay and now try and get rid of some of those throwing marks before I push it out further I have to torch it a bit more to push it out and after I've torched it I won't be able to get rid of those throwing marks terribly easily or at least they'll look like I've got rid of them but they'll reappear wetting up and scraping off actions to get a smooth surface or smoother surface start Pushing him down a little, making sure get right into the centre there. Great. Clean up underneath with a flatter part of the tool. More of a burnishing action at this stage than a scraping and then get into it with the torch again third law for every action is an equal and opposite reaction I've got to provide the reaction underneath to make sure the action doesn't go too far and there we go and this clay is now getting a bit too dry so just wet it down a bit And that will do me, I think. Yep. I don't want it too dry, because I'll crack it when I uh, 
clay will crack more to the point, which will mean I will crack it um, when I manipulate it. the elbow marks and there's sort of a, a natural shape I'm searching for it has relationships to leaves the path that a leaf would take falling out of a tree to eroded ocean foreshores and there seems to be a natural form that just appears to be right. I use things like the golden mean to try to calculate what that shape might be but then at the end you've just got to go by your gut and what looks right. Stand back and examine how it flows or doesn't. Sometimes retorch it to convince it that it wants to stand up there and be careful not to burn the sponge the stick is fierce see these pieces, love it as well, or at least some of them do. And I think a part of the reason they like it is because that rhythm falls easy on the eye because they're used to seeing it in nature, in the world around them. And I can keep going trying to get this better and better and better or finessing it Just clean up all the slip off the bat to make sure we don't get too much dust in the studio when it dries of course this is the point where you splash rubbish all over it And this is the point where you discover how badly you've mucked it up. <laughs> Actually, I haven't. I think, I think it works. Yep. This spray gun is the best thing since sliced bread. 
matching the glaze on the pot to the form of the pot. When people say that, I often wonder what was the best thing before sliced bread, but anyway. <laughs> this, turn the fan on, make sure I don't breathe in too much of the silica. Just testing what the fan will do. This form has that almost natural, I hope, wave action on it. Hold the breath while the silica dust wafts over. Normally I'd wear a mask, but at the moment I have to talk. Using the spray gun like a paintbrush. Now I've got to Imagine in the mind's eye what's going to happen with the other glaze over the top of this. And that's a bit difficult to do. After about 30 or 40 pots, you get the idea. But in this form, since there's the pot for number five or thereabouts, um, a lot of it's guesswork. T dust Temaku, I'll just run a, uh, a chun over that with the other spray gun that's more or less like a high pressure fire hose. This is a, a finer finishing gun. And speaking of finer finishing, yes, better, 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 much better. Okay, that's it. I'll put a chun glaze on later. And as I say in the classics, here's one we prepared earlier, along with the silica dust. You can see that the glaze, after it's been applied, moves during the firing. And that's what you've got to imagine is going to happen when you're applying this glaze. You've got to have an idea in your mind where it's going to move and apply the glaze accordingly. This has had the chun glaze applied over it, selectively at times, and then over the whole lot, so that we get this pullback on the rim to emphasise the rim and the natural waveform of the rim. <laughs>